All right. Hello. Welcome, welcome to a, I don't know, spur of the moment stream, kind of. It's been a while since I've done these. I'm just going to work work through them and see what happens. The first thing I'm going to do is open up the challenge. Obviously, we read what it says. Uh, da, 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 da. Solve the lab by the lightweight leet weather leather jacket. All right. And we have credentials. Wiener and Peter. Let me actually zoom in. All right. So the first, actually, the, yeah. Once I've got the URL, what we're going to do is take the the host name, go into Burp. Why is Burp being silly? There we go. Target scope, and then we just want to add that, and that's fine. Okay. Uh, I don't want the incept. I open the browser, and then we're going to copy the full URL, and we're going to browse to it. <laughs> okay, so we see the elite leather jacket. I'll zoom in again. It is one thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars. Let's log into our account. Okay, I have a hundred dollars of score, score store credit. Which means I can't, I can't just go here. Scroll down if it'll let me add one to the cart. Go to my cart, place order. Not enough store credit. Uh, but let's have a look and see what that did. So you can ignore most of this. It's just getting images. In fact, what we can do is we can go up here and go and click this hide thing and I'll clear it up a little bit better. We could probably hide SVGs as well, so we'll add SVGs to this. SVG. <laughs> hey Liquid Warden. Okay. Uh, so this is the login. Don't care about that. Um, this is us visiting the product. So we visited the product page. If we click render, it'll actually show that. Right. Then we post it to the cart. Um, probably can't. Yeah, you should be able to see this. If you can't see this, let me know, and I'll I'll try and make it a little bit bigger. Um, but effectively, we have product ID, which is number one, uh, which is just the ID for the uh, product here. Quantity one, and interestingly, a price of one three three seven. Zero zero, right? Which is interesting because that's the price in cents of the leather jacket. <laughs> so let's remove that, and we're going to send this to repeater. Okay, and yeah, redacted exactly. So we could try messing around with this. So, like, what happens if we just set it to 100? Okay, that's redirecting us to the product page, which is fine. We don't need to go there. All we care about is our cart. And look at there. We have changed the price. It is now $1. So, see, I put 100, but the price was in cents. 100 cents, $1. I can order 100, but I don't want to. I'm going to place this. And here, <laughs> the price goes back to 1,337 because it's, I'm guessing on the order confirmation, it's actually using, it's actually looking up the correct value. Um, so obviously this is quite a rare vulnerability these days. I mean, in e-commerce, um, it used to be it used to be how all of the sites did it. So <laughs> they would basically have the price just as a parameter, but because of course everybody back in the day didn't think you know they they thought that websites were secure and didn't realize you could intercept requests and change them. But you can. 
All right. High level logic vulnerability. Okay. Uh, so this one, you can exploit a work of logic flow and it's purchasing workflows to buy items. So we're going to buy a lightweight leather jacket. Same, basically, the same kind of thing as before. Oops. So again, we see the leather jacket. Let's just do the same thing we did before. So we're going to go here, um, add one to the cart. They've learned. So, there's no longer a price. <laughs> so, question is how do we exploit this? So, oh, my cart is empty. What? Oh, did I not? Whoops. Okay. So. Is this just going to be... This might be a... Um, an overflow? We could try negative one. Yeah, let's remove it first. I mean, how many are we going to... Can we place the order? Cart total price cannot be less than zero. <laughs> so it's not that. So this might just be an integer overflow. Anybody don't doesn't know what integer overflow is? I can explain. So, when you're storing integers, integers being um, basically numbers, whole numbers, negative or positive, um, when an operating system or a programming language is storing those, uh, by default, it usually chooses or it stores it in some kind of format. So, for instance, if for integers, it usually uses um, was it eight? Yeah, it's eight bits to store an integer. All right, which is fine because with eight bits, you can do two to the eight. So, what's two to the eight? No, it's not eight bits. Then is it? It's eight bytes. I think. Hang on. Two, five, six times eight. Is that it? Now I'm freaking. I'm just going to go to the integer page. Is it 32 bytes? That's not even the thing I want. I told you this is going to be a chill stream. Again. I got I got two vaccines earlier, so uh right. I'm just forgetting how many bits it uses. <laughs> Bytes and octets, here we go. Uh thirty two that would make sense. Thirty two bits. <laughs> okay. So a bit can be either on or off. So you have two two states, so two to the thirty-two. So you can store that many numbers in thirty-two bits, um, and that's usually the default. Obviously, for some languages, they support higher or lower. Um, so 
yeah, effectively what happens, I mean, this is technically one more, because if you set all the bits to one, um, I think you get, yeah, you have to end with an odd number. So I believe it's 2 to the 32 minus 1. Uh, which is a lot. Uh, so what's this, actually? That's thousands, millions. That's 4.2 4 billion. Um, however, when you're storing negative numbers, or you want to store positive and negative numbers, right? You need to use one of those bits. Basically, the first bit needs to be used to tell the uh, the language whether the number it's storing is positive or negative. So technically, in most integers that are signed, they're called signed integers because they have a sign, positive or negative. You actually only have two to the thirty-one minus one. Let's do that. So you have this number, which is basically half. Right, which makes sense. If you're taking out one of the bits to use for a positive or negative, that's basically two times less options. Is that how you would say that? So you can go all the way from negative 2 billion, whatever this number is, all the way to positive. Okay. Um, however, what happens if you were just to take this number, right? So you can store this number in an integer. What happens if you take it and then add one to it? Right? Bear in mind that all all of the um, all of the bits in this integer are set to one already. So if you add one, they're all going to be set to zero, right? And whatever the first one is is going to get flipped as well, which generally means it's going to turn it's going to change its sign. So a, a negative number become, becomes a positive number. If that makes sense. And uh, we can probably go to Integer Overflow, actually. Somebody mentioned it, right? Thank you for following. Integer Overflow. Uh, thank you for following. I do apologize, but I mean, I, I cannot speak that language. Is that, is that kanji? I did attempt learning Japanese at one point. I do apologize, whatever, whatever language. It is kanji, okay. At least I recognized it. Okay, so is this going to explain how it's done? <laughs> Examples. Uh, it's not. Maybe we could maybe we could code it in Java. Let's do that. Java integers. Problem with the problem with coding in something like PHP or Python is because they're because they're such high level languages, they don't really suffer from this issue. Um, but Java, does Java have like a small int? Probably doesn't. All right. Um, uh, do we have a test directory already? We don't. Okay. Test. Um, I'll open up VS Code. So I know Java does suffer from this. <laughs> Alright. Select a language. Java, please. Okay. Public class int overflow. Yeah, C and C++ do as well, but I don't know C++. <laughs> Public static void main. String args. 
you don't know what's going on, don't worry about it. Int overflow equals zero system dot out dot print line. Uh, can we just pr can we print a? Oh, I always forget. I think we can. All right. Where's the test directory? Uh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to call it int overflow dot Java. And now we're going to see if I suck at programming. Uh, Java, sorry, Java C integer overflow. Okay, integer overflow. All right, good. We got a zero. So what's the max number we can store? I think it's this. So let's just double check we can actually store that. I'm going to compile it again. Okay. Now what happens if we plus one to it? So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to print it, and then we're going to go system out dot print line overflow plus one. Hopefully that will work, and hopefully it just won't concatenate. It shouldn't concatenate. There we go. See what's happened? Now you may notice that number is not one more than 2,147,483,647. In fact, it's quite a lot less than that. And the reason is Java sucks at numbers. Uh, Exactly. It overflew, overflew, overflowed to the lowest number possible. All right. And now, if we add, right, let's just keep going. We're going to system.out.println. Um, actually, can I do. I'm just going to set this, I'm going to make this easier to see. Overflow equals, sorry, plus equals one should work, I think. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do overflow plus equals this number. Right? So it's basically plusing the positive version of this. So I did, oh, inch too large. Yeah, that would, that would explain we have to do seven, sorry. Okay, so we get up we go back up to negative one. And obviously we, we need to plus one for that to make it zero again. Good. Alright, now let's add we'll just keep going. Remember we're not we're not gonna subtract anything here. So I'm gonna go overflow plus equals this again, right? Again, all we're doing is adding. Okay, we're back up to what we started with. So let's add one to that. Overflow plus equals one. System out print line overflow. And we're back to where we started. It just goes round and round and round. So it's not like you can overflow it just once. You can overflow this as many times as you want. It's just going to keep doing it. Anyone not understand that? Alright. So how do we solve this challenge then? Let's just refresh the page, make sure it hasn't died. Well... What I think we need to do is try and find some kind of integer overflow. Now, what I probably want to do, since I know that um, this is a power of two, basically, I feel like if I find 
a number that's close enough to a power of two. We might be able to abuse that a little bit. Um, or I could at least do this. I could probably actually just take the 1337, right? Take this number. Um, 1337. Alright, so if we ordered this many... Um, <laughs> if we ordered this many jackets, we would get to just under this number. But if we order one more than this, so 1606196, so what will happen? So we're going to remove this jacket, go back to here. Quantity 6. Okay. Well, that's promising. Look at the total. So the question, why didn't we... Well, I mean, we're still technically over it, but the reason it's 404, if we do multiplication, right? So if we... Do this times 157. is this number. Okay. Um... And then if we do this minus two to the thirty-two minus one. Uh, no, why did that not work? Oh god, I don't want you to access my location. I mean, that's just not right. That's just not right at all. Well, we know that this this is the value anyway, so. 405, but remember, um, this value is actually going to be negative, so it needs to be 408, right? Because it wraps around, becomes 408. So 404 makes sense. So we still can't buy this jacket because we only have $100 of store credit. However, let's remove one. Okay, we can't remove one. What we're going to do, we're going to add this many jackets. So we're going to do one less than last time. Okay, I see what's going on. So we know that if we if we do this, we add this many. What's our calculation going to be now? Um, Times one, two, three, seven. We're going to be about $933 under. So we need to make up the difference. We need to add some stuff to get us to $933 or more dollars. All right. But we don't need to go over that. So let's see. What's closest to 100 here? This one. Here we go. There's a 98. So what was the number we wanted to make? 933. So I think if I add this 10 times, okay, all right. And now if I do this again, Why did that not work? Hmm. Send. Why is it not letting me add other stuff? Hang on a minute. Add to car. Alright. For some reason it's letting me add stuff, so what we'll do, we'll just add this. We'll just add this value. Manually, I guess. Anybody really don't understand what's going on, or have I explained it okay? Yeah. <sighs> what is. Uh, 
I don't understand why it's not liking this at all. Uh, maybe I need to do it backwards. So let's add ten of these afterwards. Okay. So now if we subtract one of these. Nope, it's gone again. Um, what was, why did subtracting one just not work? <laughs> um, let's try this thing again, I guess. I don't know. Six. Can we maybe... Oh, hang on. Maybe if we just do these now. No, we can't. What am I talking about? We can't do this. Um... Oh no, chat. This is bizarre. This shouldn't. I mean, I've sold this one before. I'm just not seeing what I'm doing wrong this time. That means I do this. Oh, okay. If I order negative, all right. I guess that works. I don't know why the other way didn't. Oh, that's that's weird. But now we can at least buy a crap ton of leather jackets. Uh, it hasn't solved it though. <laughs> why did that not solve it? Oh, add more. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I did buy something. That's how we did it last time. We bought... Um, we bought ne a negative one of these. Alright, I guess we'll try doing this. And so we need to just add... Where's the 98 one, I guess? Do the math again. So if we add negative of these, oh, actually no, we don't even need to add negative though, do we? We just need to do. Oh, maybe it's not an over. Hang on. I think maybe we're being too clever. Yeah, I know I only have ten. That's gonna be fine. Let's add negative 10 of these. Okay, well, we'll add one. Uh, so quantity is going to be negative 10. Yeah, all right. I was just trying to be too clever. I mean, this will work. So now I just need to figure out something that's going to be roughly $50. Is there anything that's $50? There we go. If I buy this waterproof tea bag. 
Here we go. We're now at $8. And we're, we are buying one leather jacket. So this wasn't really what I thought it was. I thought this was going to be another... This was going to be an instant overflow. And there was an instant overflow, as we saw. However... That's not how you solve this particular lab. I imagine we could have done it with the integer overflow just with one of these instead, but it looks like we could solve it without. So all I did there was I ordered minus 14 of these. This being roughly $100. So by doing it 14 times, obviously this is 1337. So that's going to be roughly 1400. So it's going to be 1337 minus 1400 which is whatever, plus this gets us to $8. So a little bit of math. Thank you for following. It's not even SQL or PHP, and thanks for following Sirius Teleport. Um, so this isn't actually SQL or PHP. This is... Um, actually, this might be PHP, but it's... Basically, it's a limit in languages. Um... It, it kind of makes sense as a limit, to be honest, uh, because you don't know. I mean, while you know when you're setting a number, what like the, the, the number is, so the max number of bytes you need to just do that number, you don't know how that number is going to change in the future. So by adding, you know, if you double that number, you have no idea if that's going to happen in the code. So there has to be some kind of upper limit to how many, well, I guess, how many numbers you can store. Um, and by default, integers in a lot of languages are just 32 bits. But you can get like 64-bit integers. You can get, there's actually, I think in Java, big int. I think. Big. There we go, big integers. Um, no, I don't think so. I think a long is still, uh, hang on. Okay, no, you're right. A long is, a long can be 64 bit, but the, the long doesn't necessarily mean long. It's, um, longs are used to store, um, uh, not, not decimals. Yeah, they are. They used to decimals, I think. Or is that floats? No, I'm thinking about floats and doubles. What am I talking about? Again, I I blame the COVID vaccine and the flu shot. Yeah, so you know, you're right, Bonzo. Yeah, a long dead type is 64-bit. Yeah, floats and doubles are different. Okay, that's high logic. High level logic. Inconsistent security controls. Uh, allows arbitrary users to access administrative functionality. Alright, so this is a different type of business logic, I guess. All right, we have an email client. Every uh, So one thing about the labs, the Web Security Academy labs, if you ever see something up here, you're going to have to use it as part of the lab. It's a nice, like, clue. <laughs> so we have an email address here. Uh, so let's go to register. If you work for Don't Want to Cry, please use your at Don't Want to Cry email address. Obviously, we don't have one. Um, <laughs> displaying all at exploit so this is important this, it displays all emails that are at this and all subdomains which I imagine is how we're supposed to abuse this so if we do tib at don't want to cry dot com dot exploit like that 
That's not in the... There we go. Email fill would be good. Register. <laughs> Refresh the email. Okay, there we go. Oops. Okay, my account. Now if I log in. Um, okay, so that didn't work. Oh, I imagine maybe it's this. Maybe you just have to update your email. Again, I might just be overthinking it. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. The king of overthinking things, that's me. All right, so we shouldn't even have to use that cool trick. Um, we just have to change our email. And obviously the problem there is it doesn't verify that you actually own this email when you change it. So it just gives you instant access to the admin page. Anyone not understand how that worked? I think that's probably quite obvious, maybe. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know what they have against Carlos, but he seems to get deleted in a lot of these. Can you register the first email? Well, no, because we don't have control over that email. Right? <laughs> how would we have received an email we had to register your account and when you register the account it sends you an email to conf confirm if we just registered with his that email address like if i go to log out maybe okay it doesn't even give me access to the thing again um yeah remember when i entered this email here we received an email for the registration i couldn't log in until that happened All right. Lord enforcement of business rules. Uh, it has a logic flaw in its purchasing workflow. Okay, so we need to buy the elite leather jacket again. Okay, we have a, a coupon. And there's no no email app, but what happens if we just do this? We get another coupon. All right, so we have two coupons. Wiener and pizza. Let's add this jacket. All right, so the, the coupon I copied was sign up 30. So we get a 30% off, which is quite a lot. Now, obviously we, we would check if we can use this again. Coupon already applied. All right, well, we have this one. Uh, it's still spinning. All right, we can apply multiple coupons. So let's try applying new cast again. Coupon already applied, but... Oh, look. <laughs> so the reason this works is the code is likely, for whatever reason, just checking the last coupon that was added, the most recent coupon. Um, and you might think, well, why? Um, it's possible that this functionality originally only allowed one coupon to be added, right? But maybe, maybe Mr. Boss Man or Mrs. Boss Lady came down and was like, no, I want people to use more than one coupon if they have them. 
So you need to change the code. And they did. They changed the code to allow you to add multiple coupons. But, crucially, the check... Exactly, make it work now. Do it. Do it live. Crucially, the check to see if a coupon had already been applied, right, was still just going to look up the... It's basic, maybe it had like a limit one on the SQL query, right? You know, select select all from <laughs> whatever orders where something, I don't know. Or select all from coupons where order equals whatever the idea of the order is. Limit one. We should only return the one, the latest one, most, most likely. Okay. So, actually, just to solve this, we just need to keep doing this. We've got 100 dollars of store credit again so let's just keep using these two coupons till we get under a hundred dollars which is going to be now there we go <laughs> oh actually that's even better <laughs> it's taking 30 percent off the price it's not even taking 30 percent off of what we had <laughs> that's a that's a really bad Thing as well can we just have can we have a free jacket now we can yeah so the obviously when it applies this 30 percent off it, usually what you would do is you'd apply it to the current total right but it's applying it to just this which is really dumb Because imagine a situation, right, where you had a 50% a off, a 20% off, and a 30% off. Yeah? So if you had a, a 20, a 30, and a 50, then let's do the math. So let's say you have a $1,000 jacket, right? So we're going to apply the 20% times, uh, sorry, times the 30% times the 50%, right? And... Obviously, that's still bad. It's still thirty dollars instead of a thousand. Um, but if instead of that we do what a thousand minus a thousand times zero point two minus a thousand times zero point three minus a thousand times this. Uh, should be zero because all those percentages add up to a hundred percent right anyone not understand maybe it stores the light. well it's got to store all of them because they're all here so it's storing them somewhere but yeah who knows how it works all right, load. I imagine this must be the in the temporary variable. I mean, yeah, maybe. Either way, it's storing them somewhere and only looking at the first one or the latest one. Okay, I imagine because this says low level logic flaw, this is actually going to be the same, uh, the buffer overflow vulnerability. So we're going to add one of these to the cart and then we're going to try and find something um this one looks maybe because it's 60 it's almost 64. If you kept going would you get added store credit no because i imagine the operation is just going to i mean actually no because the, the price was was less than zero i think it rounded up maybe to zero uh, okay, so what am I doing? Oh, let's probably actually do this in Burp Suite. Okay, so we're going to add this jacket. Then what we're going to do, uh, do I still have the... I don't. 
integer overflow. I just want to get the the, the value of the um, thirty two bit. Uh, is it gonna give me the number? Yes. Yeah, I know I could just do it like that, but you know what? Screw it. Two, two to thirty-two. Uh, two to thirty-one. Sorry. So we want to do this. Oops. The max cache. Yeah, exactly. Everything is. Um. What was all I found? Sixty-three point something. Sixty-three eighteen. So if we divide sixty-three eighteen. Okay. If I add this many. Of this. Value must be less than or equal to 99. Well, I say it doesn't. Invalid parameter quantity. Okay, so actually, it, it uh, doesn't like that. Okay. Can we do negative then? I mean, let's just try it. Ah, oh, we can do negatives. All right, perfect. Oh, we can't. Um, can we just keep, like, can we wrap around? Maybe this will work. No. Hmm. Okay, well, the max was 99. Right? What happens if we add 99 again? Okay. This is how we do it. <laughs> so. What might be a better idea then is if we remove this. Let's find the second. So we only want to buy one of these. So let's find the the second most expensive item. Which is looking like this $87. Nope, 92. Okay. So we're going to do some calculations. We want to divide by 92. Um, and then we want to divide that by 99. And then this is how many, how many requests we send? No, that can't be it. All right, is it literally just going to be sending this? Hang on. Maybe it's this. I mean, that's 16,000 requests still. Wrap around the division? Oh, is it? Hang on. All right, we need to play around with this some more then. Uh, can we add like neg negative? No. Uh, why can't I make all those requests we give? I mean, it's just, it's it's a lot of requests. It, I don't think it's how you solve this lab. 16,000 just seems ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Maticus, you need to decide whether I, I'm going to speak with a higher voice or a lower voice for five minutes. <laughs> and then I forget who removed it from the wheel, but whoever spanned the wheel and removed it. <laughs> lower for sure. All right. Uh, where is... Voice box. Oh, hang on. Where's the custom pitch? Here we go. All right. Oh my God, this app is really bad. Okay. I didn't want to go down either. Okay, well, come on. Oh, let's see if that works. I need to switch over my my mic. No promises this is going to work. Okay, does that work? Am I speaking in a slightly lower voice right now? Excellent, okay. Uh, can we still add native amounts of products? I, I just tried that. I don't think we can. Like, if I try adding this. Well. You sound 40 years old. Are we going to play a game? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so maybe if I add negative one of this product, number two. No. Um. I mean, okay, so I guess 99 was the max you could add for this, right? I don't know why. So, Burp never froze for me. And then it started happening to Gar, and then it started happening to Al, and now it's happening to me. What have I done? Okay, so can I add more? Can I just add 999? Invalid. So 100 was the max, was it? Yeah. Um, maybe it's something stupid like this. No. Um, it's not VirtualBox. No, this is VMware. And it's not my VM that locks up, it's just burp. Alright, maybe we just keep going with 99 and... Mr. Streamer! See what happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to... Um... <laughs> uh, what do I want to do now? Can I convert the into heck? I don't think so. Hmm. I wonder if I can. What I really want to do is I want to. I want to make this load. Um, the cart page. I think I can actually do that with extender. Um, I just forget what the extension's called. It's a new extension that I've been playing around with. Uh, begins with R, I think. Maybe not. Reshaper. I believe also this is a free... Yeah, this isn't a pro extension, so you can use this on your own stuff. Alright, so when... 
Uh, event direction is a response. Okay. Uh, what? Delete that. Okay. All right. So event direction is a response. Then matches text. Okay. Matches test response body no headers. Believe me, this will make sense. If it matches this. Okay, contains obviously. Validate. Okay. Then we're going to do a Okay, we're not going to do that. Again, I've, I've been messing around with this extension, so I'm not very good with it. Um, there is a way. Oh, can I just do this? Read a... Maybe one of the extensions? No, it's not. Trust me, my, my work one has way more than this. Okay, add. Oops. All right, I'm going to save that. Oh, actually, what am I doing? No, that is right, cart. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, crap, come on. Source the value. Uh, crap. I'm going to have to look this up. Because it's a really nice extension. Reshaper replace um, part of response. Ask resharper. Probably put burp in there. There we go. Change a value in a return response. It's probably doing it completely wrong. Okay. Open the rules tab. Oh, okay. yeah, we're in the rules. Response, add, but then set value. Okay. Oh, right, that makes sense. Set value. Set so text to whatever the text we want. So this is going to be cart. Uh, crap, we press the wrong one. Destination message is going to be a response header, the location header. Okay. Uh, where am I? Did I scroll down too much? I did. Destination message manager response header identifier. Okay, I think that's that's it then. Rule name is required. Uh, oh, I'm gonna redirect. Screw it. All right, does that actually work? And it's gonna I need to enable it for repeater. It did not. Why did it not work? Because it's not enabled. That would make sense. Yay, cart. Okay. Follow redirects. 
render. So now, oh, what am I doing? I <laughs> need to do this. Oh, that's kind of annoying though. I really hate that about repeater actually, it doesn't like I can save follow direction follow redirections, but I don't want it to show the redirection. I know how to do it with macros. Oh, maybe that just Forget it, I figured it out. Okay. <laughs> I guess if you just change it to follow direction redirections in there, it works. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm posting to the cart, and even though the cart wants me to redirect, so whenever I post a cart, it tries to redirect me back to the product page. Oh, maybe because I have. Oh. Am I just a? Am I just? An, I'm just an idiot today, aren't I? Hang on. Can I just do cart here? Yeah. Well, that's how you use Reshaper. Didn't need to do any of that, but just need to change this to cart. However, we've got it done. So, well, the thing is, yeah, maybe 16 times, uh, 16,000 times, but maybe the overflow is slightly lower. Maybe they're not using um, a 32-bit integer, maybe they're using a slightly smaller one, which would require us to just go less. Like, who knows? I basically want to try it and go until we get a price that's negative. Hey, Dark Eldar. That's not looking correct either. Ah! <laughs> I don't want to do that. Do we just do this? Continue indefinitely. Um, I only want to go one request at a time. Options, don't need to do that. Ah, follow redirections always. Extract. Ah, uh, I do need. I'm either just over engineering this or it's something bizarre. Refetch response. Uh, here we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's a much easier way of doing it. Now I don't have to press anything. So I, I have intruder just sending the same thing over and over again, and we're extracting the amount. If I do it up here, so I just want to see if it's ever going to just overflow normally. Because <laughs> we can only add 99 things at a time. That seems to be the max. So I don't really understand. Unless... The only other thought I have is that if we try and... There wasn't a lower limit, so what if we try and add... Or oh, maybe that's it. Hang on.
The great thing about doing these labs so many times, I just keep getting them. There's just too many labs. So, my account. I'm hoping it hasn't just. Has it just it hasn't saved it. Good. All right. So. So we can add one, but I don't want to add one. I want to add. Let me do this. Okay, negative one. So, if we really wanted to wrap round twice, we would need this number, right? So, we would need 2 to the 32 minus 1 divided by 1337. If I add that number of negatives, is that correct? Yeah, I guess it was. Uh, no, invalid parameter. But we can add way more negatives, which makes me think that's the way you have to do it. But no, actually, because this doesn't even show up. All right, I guess we just keep going with this. This is a weird one. I can't remember how... I, I know this has to be an inch to overflow of some kind. I just can't remember how we solved it last time. I'm honestly just wondering if it's a lower integer. Because the thing is, we were dealing with 32 bits before, but we do integer overflows. And we look down. <laughs> there used to be a nice little... Oh, there we go. There we go. What do I say? Pause. I love it when the, the timing is just right. So, with a 32 bit, that's the max. And it doesn't look like we're using a 60, a 16 bit either. We're doing, we're using something weird. Hmm. Oh no, well, maybe we are because that's going to be. I bet if we take this value. Uh, and we divide by 13, 1, 3, 3, 7. We're going to get something around, around 1, 3, 7. I don't want the dollar sign. 15,000. Does that make sense? Oh, I need to, I need to actually adjust that. It's been more than five minutes. Malika's Maximus um, adjusted my pitch. Thank you for following. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, I have a redemption thing where you can just adjust the pitch of my voice, and I forgot it was only supposed to be five minutes long. <laughs> uh, okay, what is going on then? I mean, it's clearly... Oh! Hang on, is it storing it in... That's what it was doing, it's storing it in cents. Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that, but it's storing in cents. 
It was an integer overflow. It was a 32-bit. Right? So. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's really good. Okay, so here's the thing, right? 2 to the 32 minus... Uh, sorry, 2 to the 31. Right? Is this. And for some reason, I was thinking that's going to be in dollars. It's not. That's going to be in cents. Right? So if we divide that by 100, okay, we can do that many dollars. And if we divide that by 1337, uh, what is going on? I just need to put a bunch of freaking parentheses around. Yeah, we only need to add 16,000. Right? And since we can add 99 at a time, I need to probably put parentheses around this now. Whoops. Let's actually, what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to automate it again and just double check. 162 requests. Makes sense. So, uh, I can clear out this one. Let's remove everything. Oops. Okay. So we're going to capture another request for adding to the cart. Going to go here. Peter. Uh, okay. Let's just make sure we don't have anything in our cart now. All right. 99. Send this to Intruder. Clear. Payloads. We don't want any. Whoops. I want null payloads. And we're going to generate. How many was it? 162. 162. And I don't want that. Okay. So hopefully, once this works. We can just go back to here, I guess. All right, so when it gets to the magic number, it should just overflow. What was it, 16,000 16, we need or something? So not too much longer. We were... Yeah, about halfway through. And once we hit that magic number, we should overflow the integer and we should get a negative total. And honestly, it is a bit odd because you're not, you wouldn't generally store this as an integer. You would store it as a float or a double, I would think. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, so we've hit 16,137. I think I went over a bit much. But the question is, can we now just place an order? The cart total price cannot be less than zero. Okay. That's all right, though. Because we now just need to add this amount to this, right? <laughs> so... Too many freaking tabs with calculations in them. So if I add all this, divide by 1337, right? Um, yeah, so now divide by 99. So another 161 requests should do it. You know what, I'm going to do 160. Yeah. That might be why. I do know there was there are rounding errors, but... So, you'll notice now the number... It's negative and it's getting... More positive. It's going up.
We're almost there. And I'm hoping after 160 requests we'll be slightly below what we need to be at. Okay, let's try this. Alright, good. Because 99 times whatever it was. 99 times 157. I'd rather do 88. Is thirteen one three two uh, okay hang on a minute. So I just need to do a little more calculating I guess. Bye bye one three two seven is forty seven, so I need to do forty seven more requests. No, forty seven more but at ninety nine, so I need to add add forty seven more, I think. God, this is confusing. All right, uh, so instead of this, I can just go here, send a repeater. What was the number? 47? Yeah, where the hell am I? 47. And we're almost there, yeah. So now if I add another one, I'm going to get above. So what am I going to get? One three three. I need to make sure because I only have a hundred dollars in my cart. Pretty sure. In my account. Oh, I wasn't even logged in. Are you kidding me? Please say it preserves carts. Oh. Why would it not preserve the cart? I'm gonna do all that again. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh boy. All right, I, I just don't I, we're not going to do that. I'm sure I'm sure you can see what's going on. We just need to we need to get this to a positive number. Probably adding one more maybe would have got us over. Well, it definitely would have got us over, but it may have got us too far over. So my plan was to go back to the home page and just add a bunch of low level items. All right. So I don't really care that we didn't solve that one most because we actually did solve it. I just wasn't logged in. SRF, server side request forgery. Basically, the better version of cross site request forgery, which honestly does not exist much anymore. Hmm. So, what's we have to, what do we have to do? Uh, we've got to access the admin interface at localhost slash admin. All right. Do we have credentials? No. Okay, so this is good. All right. So we're going to go down here, check the stock in London. And as you can see here, I move this. The stock API is being passed list parameter hmm. what what happened Malicus Malicus are you abusing your mod power you deleted 18 messages and timed him out for a second I mean, that seems a little excessive. All right, so basically, yeah, we have this. Um, and when we send it, we get this 651, which is probably a response directly from here. So maybe we, if we try just going like that. Missing parameter. Uh... So does it, maybe we just try, you 
interestingly, it <laughs> as long as the product ID and store ID there, for some reason it doesn't actually require anything after the forward slash. All right, can we can we get to port eighty? Could not connect to external chuck set. No, stop check. Okay. Port eighty isn't open. Can we do twenty two? Did I just do two or twenty two? Oh, I didn't. I didn't even update it. That's probably why. Twenty two. Could not connect. All right. Well, the task wanted us to try and find this local host thing. So we just go to local host. Uh, really need to remember to hit enter first. Yeah, so that did work. So maybe it's easier to see if I go to render. But even though it looks like we're still on the same site, it's returning the entire response from localhost, right? So originally, originally this would just send us like literally the response here is just a 743. And the reason it's a 743 is this stock API at the back end is just returning a number. All right. However, if we replace the stock um, URL with just localhost, functionality is still the same. It returns whatever this URL returns on the server side. The difference is because we're technically coming from a local machine, the server is making the request, um, the admin panel appears because the admin panel clearly has some kind of logic where, okay, if it's accessed internally, you must be an admin, uh, which we're obviously not. And so now we can just browse this site and we can say, okay, we want to delete Carlos. And I think that should have worked. It did. We deleted Carlos. Now if I actually go back and resend that admin request again, Carlos shouldn't be there. Yeah. Just us. Poor Carlos. Any questions about that one? Basic SSRF against another backend system. Use the stock check functionality to scan the internal network for an admin interface on port 8080 and delete the user calls. All right. This one I, I have done. This is very realistic. So you'd be surprised how often SSRF is found. And you can use it to port scan. Uh, what am I doing? Honestly, port scanning with SSRF is just kind of funny. All right, so the stock check again has this stupid URL in it, which just sends us back a number. If we were to take everything off here, missing parameter, we don't really care about that. Um, if I do AD81, what's that going to show us? Could not connect, so we're going to actually uh we'll just scroll to match and check to text changes no oh, well i guess that didn't work um so what we need to do here will 80 work no what i would generally do let's just yeah do what i would generally do so we're gonna we're gonna send this to intruder Clear. We already know, let's just say, 
<laughs> somebody told us that they were using 192.168.0. Um, so we don't need to change any of this other than this parameter here. So this this one, right? We're going to iterate through uh, numbers from one all the way to 255. Stepping up by one each time. It's going to be 255 of them. Uh, we will. We can set the resource pool at 10. Shouldn't be fine. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the extract feature to extract whatever this warning message is, if it exists. And I imagine we don't have the port. I'm going to. I'm going to show you what I would do generally. So I'm just trying to try and connecting to port 80. We'll see. I know the challenge requires 8080, but that's because the challenge told us that. I want to see if there's anything listening on port 80 first. And this is how you would do it. You know, if you want to actually turn an SSRF into a port scanner, you need to, to do this. Um, so what we'll do is... So we're aware that could not connect is likely the code... Um, when uh what was i gonna say it's like a, yeah the code that occurs when the the port is closed so now we know there's no nothing listening on port 8080 no sorry on port 80. um so if we now can't change that why can't i change that oh whatever disable that go to payload position sorry uh so let's try 22 right And we'll see. Okay, nothing. All these external errors. All right, so let's say after we've tried all the really common ports, we eventually get around to AD80, which is still common, but not as common as, for instance, 443, 21, etc. All right, so now we start the attack. And then we're going to search... And here we go. So we found two. Two of them did not return a 500. You can probably sort by status, actually. So this dot one is the one we already know, right? The dot one is in here. But the other one is dot 10. Okay. And it returns a 404. Not found. So we'll send this to repeater. Let's verify that it's 404 not found. All right. And so now what you can do is we can actually just start scanning stuff, right? So if we... Uh, so you're all encode this. Uh, why won't that... Hmm, whatever. All right. We'll send this to Intruder again. So we already know it's a web server, but what I want to do is... Clear. God. We're going to place a parameter there. You're going to go payload, simple list, uh, and then we'll just do, yeah, maybe file name short. So that's basically just a bunch of file names. Probably do directories, actually. Probably be easier. Directory short, all right? So 372 directories. How long is the... Yeah, all right. We're going to use the short directories. So basically we're just doing a Durbuster, except we're doing it via an SSRF, right? Um, and let's see what happens. Okay, we get a 200, it's on the admin page. We're going to wait for it to finish anyway. And again, I know this is the same, you're just supposed to skip ahead because it tells you, right? Find the admin interface on this port on port 8080. But I want to show you how it's done in the real world when you don't have clues. Alright, so I only found one thing. Obviously, I only scanned, what was it, 200 and something? How many was it, actually? I only scanned 372 things. Um, but, in reality, you would scan a crap ton more, right? Have we found an admin panel? Great. Go back to our repeater. We can stick admin at the end here and just verify that. Go to render. Hooray, we're in the admin panel. Alright. 
we go back to raw and have a look at what this delete carlos is we just need to stick this at the end obviously delete actions would never be set to just get requests either but whatever uh now it's deleted and we solve the lab <laughs> Uh, with Poverty Burp? No, it won't. Okay, let me show you how you do it with Poverty Burp. Uh, we need to go to Extender. need to go to... <laughs> Turbo Intruder. Why am I not in the T's? Turbo Intruder, which is not a pro extension. Uh, it's already installed. Fair enough. Alright, so we're... What do you want to see? Should we just... Should we do the original... Um... Let's do the original trying to find which which uh not the IP address but the well no yeah let's try and find the IP address. Uh turbo intruder. <laughs> uh okay, don't want the last code used. What do I want? Uh what's default? all right so instead of this believe me i don't use turbo intruder too often so i think what we have to do is put a percentage s in there i think uh let me just double check turbo intruder github Is there a wiki? No. Okay, documentation is here. Yeah. Percentage S is where your payloads will be placed. Right. So go back to Turbo Intruder. So, percentage S. And obviously, we don't want for word in whatever this is. We want for word in range 0255, I think. And we'll just call it num, actually. Um, we probably need to convert to a string. Uh, we'll do, actually, we'll just do two. We'll do from 0 to just make sure it works uh, why did it not work uh Oh, hang on. It was maybe it wasn't supposed to do this default one. Again, I don't use this that often, but there's I don't think we need this though, so I'm just going to try. Okay, did that work? Yay! I think it did. It did! Alright, yeah, for some reason though, those other things were messing me up. Alright, so we want 0 to 256, because it doesn't go up to the next one. Okay. Um, so now we can just do this. It's finding stuff, status. Uh... Did they turn it off already? All right, I think Turbo Intruder went slightly too fast.
All right, request book. Yeah, maybe that's not what we want to do. Let's do current connections 10, request book connection 1. Maybe that's probably a little bit better. There we go, okay. Turbo Intruder goes too fast. Turbo Intruder can, is actually faster than regular Intruder, usually. In a lot of instances. You've got more control. But anyway, we did this. Um... Could also do stuff like um, if interesting. So basically, um, where is it here? Filtering race conditions. No. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. So we can do stuff like this. Define your own filters based on response attributes. So we could use this match status. So we only really care about stuff that's not 500s, right? Is there a way to do decorated documentation? Here we go. Filter status. You may want, want to view all responses with other status except for 200. So we're going to filter out the 500 server errors. Go. If I can ever get here. Yeah, burp is being a bit of a nightmare right now. I might need to rebuild my VM. Oh, there we go. Okay, we finally caught up. Uh, so, remember we noticed that basically 500s were returned if you couldn't connect? So if we just add filter status 500 and just start the attack again. Now none of the 500s bit. Right? So there's, I mean, you can use all of these, look. God, it's so freaking slow. Um, but also you could just, you know, this is really how it's done. So all of the status does is it sets this interesting to true if the current request matches whatever this thing says, right? But you don't need to do that. You could evaluate the request yourself, right? You could you could change this handle response and, you know, see if the request matches some something specific. You don't need to use these, although these are probably fine. Um, you have an endpoint with slash ID ID, which is a get method. How do I pass? Values the ID from Cly. You mean like just fuzzing it generally? Um, probably just FFUF. So... So if like you, like if you gave it a word list of IDs, right? Let's just say you have a word list, IDs. Um, in fact, let's actually just let's create one. We're going to echo... No, we're not. We're going to go for I in... Uh, one to ten. Do echo I. Oops. It's probably a really bad way of doing it. Done. All right, let me have some IDs. FFUF-W IDs. HTTP localhost slash ID slash, and then you want the word fuzz, I believe. Keyword fuzz to find. What did I miss? Oh, I need to do dash u. That's the only thing I need to do. Uh, it's alright. It's matching response. So it's matching response statuses. 
it's filtering out four 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 fours, which is probably what it's currently doing. How do I say don't filter? <laughs> Can I disable the filter? Uh, I'm trying to see if I can. Oh, MC all. Let me go. Nope. It's my local host running. It's not. That would be why. So maybe, yeah, no, there you go. <laughs> uh, but if we did the all one, don't do all. Yeah, if I don't do all, it does that. If I do MC all, it's going to give me, hey, look. And I think if you, <sighs> there's a one for full URLs, isn't there? I don't use FFUF, uh, so you're going to have to give me a sec. There should be a way to use full URLs. For, uh, FUF. Verbose, alright, here we go. Dash V. I mean, it's kind of a bit more verbose than I wanted, but now you'll see which URL. So this user was a 404, for instance. Um, and if I do something very quickly, if I do make directory, var dub dub dub, uh, id, touch, var dub dub dub, id 7, uh, there you go, status 200. So if it, now if I remove that MC all, we only get one. One two hundred response back because I just created a file which matched that. Does that answer your question? And the get the get method bit is just default. You can change the get method. I oops. Believe you can change it. You ever need to? It's probably something up here. Capital X. You can also add cookies, headers, post data, etc. One more, then we'll finish off with a race. Admin interface, localhost admin. Deploy two weak anti SSRF defenses you will need to bypass. All right, interesting. So let's see, I'm going to close Turbo Intruder now. won't close. Wow. Yeah, I have no idea why Burp is so janky right now. I may have to reinstall it or something. It's not even like it's taking a massive amount of I mean, it's taking a bunch of memory, but I have a bunch of memory in the system. Yeah. Come on. God damn. I don't know why it's so slow. It might be. Can I close that? Oh, okay. So I think it might be just a turbo intruder for some bizarre reason. 
because now I tried to close it, it's just, yeah. What's going on? We're just doing some um, some web app stuff, and Turbo Intruder has frozen Burp Suite somehow. There it is. All right, it finally closed itself. It is. Yep, Al. It really is. I feel you. I've made two. I'm making another one. I'm almost at six hundred slides. <laughs> um Okay, check stock. Why is that not working? Yeah, you have to stop at some point, man. Here's the thing I always tell myself and maybe this will help you. Um you can just, you can update your course, <laughs> right? Like, it's okay. If you, if you have a deadline, if you want to get it out by Christmas, um, you can put, put stuff in it, but you can always add stuff later. Nobody's going to mind, you know? It's not like OSCP where you buy it once and then they give you the slides and the videos and like, hey, screw you if you need to come back in two years and stuff's changed. You know, I plan to update my course and honestly I have to because, yeah, there's just too much stuff to put in. I just I could write for for freaking years. All right, let's try doing this. Have I sent to repeat it yet? I think I did. Yeah. All right, so we need to get to, I think it was localhost, right? Yeah, I know, quality. But the thing is, you can make something quality and not mention another tool. Right? Ultimately, you know, this, this isn't... Is this supposed to be a beginner course, or is it supposed to be something for intermediate or advanced? Blocked for security reasons. Localhost has been blocked. Can we get to 127001? No. All right, so there are a few bypasses. Um, IP conversions. I don't know if this is this, the right one or not. Probably not. Oh, IP address format converter, maybe. Yeah, here we go. 127001. Okay, so decimal format. Yes. Why does it... It's just freezing on its own. Hex encode. Why would that work? I didn't mean to come across that way. I've, I've had that. Hex encoding wouldn't... There's no reason why hex encoding would work. Unless you, meant, unless you mean this, URL encode? God. Uh, URL encoding probably. I mean, double URL encoding maybe. The thing is, the server is going to get the uh, is going to do the URL unencoding, decoding, before it reads anything. Anyway, oh, why is this so? I honestly have no idea. This. There we go. Okay, well that's useful. So we got something, uh, if I change this to a 2, could not. Right, so we've bypassed one of these. Client error forbidden. <laughs> Is this just going to be an X forwarded for or something? one. No, okay. There are a bunch of them though. Do X real IP. Ah, oh, there's a list on hack tricks. 
Tax forwarded. Oh, maybe I need to do this now. Local host, actually. One two seven zero zero one. That probably needs to be done anyway, but yeah, we can just try all these. Oh, come on. How did, oh, I hate hack tricks. They really need to fix... I, maybe nobody's told them about this stupid bug where you can't copy more than one thing at a time. Yeah, just they, they've just disabled copy for no reason. Ah, uh, crap. The only one who could use an instant representation of IP. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Like, does uh, 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1 .1 have a website? It does, right. Yeah. So if we do this, we go to 1.1.1.1. And then just stick it in here. Yeah. I mean, it redirected, but you could do curl. Move permanently. We need to be a slash. We do a dash i. HTTPS, that would explain it. But it's redirecting already to dash one, see? Other formats? Yeah. Um, hexadecimal. There was a better site for this. IP address converter. Um, was it this one? Yeah, it was this one. One dot one dot one dot one. Hex. Uh, let's open up HTTP. There you go. <laughs> that worked. Uh, I mean, this will only work if it's IPv6, which it might be. I don't know if I've got. No. I, oh, hang on. This one needs to be... Okay, for IPv6, I think you need to stick it in square brackets. But direct access is not allowed, so that's fine. But apparently I do have an IPv6 IP address now. Which is nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, there are some more formats, I think. Oops. I mean, if you think about it, an IP address is literally just an integer. The only reason we separate it into blocks, like four sets of basically three numbers, three or, well, one to, one to three numbers, is because it's easier to remember. <laughs> so it's also easier to say. Um, but yeah. Yes, this is decimal. Can you do other things? It really depends. I mean, because it's a number, it really depends on just what browser you're using, really. Uh, oh, octal. Here we go. Can you use octal? 1.1.1.1. Okay. Let's try that. Uh... So that didn't oh that didn't work because it's just interpreting it as an integer. I wonder if there's some way to show that it's an octal. Uh, octal IP address in URL. Can you do that? I'm kind of interested now. Enter octal. Yeah, I mean that's I imagine it's not 
possible. Curl these funny IP addresses. You can write the IP address as two numbers with a dot in between them. The first number is assumed to be 8 bits and the next the 24. Okay, that's kind of fun. There's three numbers, 8, 8, 16. Yeah, so hex you have to do 0x, obviously. Uh, apparently you can you can just convert each octet to hex as well. Well, that's fun. Uh, so the thing is, I don't think we actually need to do that. Just can't believe you can't copy anymore. Yeah, you just copy one line. Ah, uh, Pad by Gitbook. Is there like a way to just edit on GitHub? There we go. This will work. Okay, cool. We just shove all these in our head. Oh, it's frozen again. I restarted my VM earlier today, so it's not that. It's just some bizarre thing going on. It's almost like when I leave it for a little while, it just decides, hey, but I'm like clicking, I can't. What is Java generally? Come on. <laughs> this is just really annoying. After you copy the clipboard and switch over, yeah, but like, Just let me be. I don't see why that would that would even matter. And it's not like I have anything really big in my clipboard. What if I just copy one thing? No, that's. It's just just annoying. I mean, this is this is not even this is like ridiculous now. This is it hasn't hung for this long. I, it must be a VM thing because it doesn't. This doesn't happen on my work laptop at all. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit! Come on. Probably just completely drop that. That's what, yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right, I'm going to kill it. Uh, kill. Well, it killed it. All right. Give me. Uh... Oh, I can try this now, actually. No, nah, that didn't work. All right. Just give me a sec. Let me reopen the damn thing. So this is fine because it's loading extensions. Alright. Uh, shit. Okay, so this one. Proxy. Well, there we go. Open browser. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even... I copied this URL. Uh, where are we? Ch 
Check stock. Did I not check this? Oh, I'm in the wrong one. All right, so what was the bypass we found? Uh, one two seven zero zero one. Was it just the intergym? I think it was, right? Oh god, you t it's frozen. Yeah. That's just bizarre. But why would it even be? Yeah, the cop. It's the copy buffer of some kind. Duplicate header names are not allowed. Oh crap! What did I do? I don't have duplicate header names. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, unless it's just it's this thing maybe nope alright let me just take out all of these alright so it's none of those ones <laughs> uh Alright, hang on. I'm gonna do this a bit more methodically. None of those. Oh, do I need to put this as one two seven zero zero one? No. What was the lab? It is local host. Okay, so it probably does need local host here. No. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. What am I doing? I don't know why I was doing that. That shouldn't. That shouldn't work. Uh. Okay. Let's just try this again. I. I was being an idiot. Okay. Changing the, of course, changing the host header in the main request won't do shit. Duplicate header, so this is an interesting one. Duplicate header names are not allowed, so what's the duplicate header name? It's that? Really? Oh, the, no, there it is. So there was a duplicate header name for some reason. But neither of those work anyway, so something else. Uh, can we do maybe a trace? No. Right. No. Do you have a browser add-on with all the CTF help in it? I've been trying to find it. Oh, you mean the um, hack tools? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's possible this isn't correct then. Um. But, I mean, it looked like it was. So, I mean, someone said double encoding. So if we encode all these characters and then, well, I mean, we could try doing it, but it probably won't work. And then 
we encode them all again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, it said there were two things it did. So what was the first one? I mean, what was the second one? Admin? Oh, right, okay, so it's not letting us access admin, but... If we do a capital A? Yeah, that was... Oh my god, that was so dumb. I mean, yeah, that's another thing you do. If, if it's not a host bypass or whatever... Um, double encoding... So the reason double encoding works is... If you think about it... Um, it's it's kind of complicated, but effectively because we're passing a URL to another request, um, if we if it only decodes it one time, it's not going to check. So presumably, what it happened was it was checking for the word localhost, right? So I imagine if we just do this, yeah. So it has to be the word localhost, right? Um, so obviously to get rid of that, we just encode the word localhost. Um, where is it URL? However, even though that doesn't say localhost to us, the first thing that happens to any um, parameter, any, at least any post parameter or URL parameter, when the server gets it, is it just it URL decodes it. It doesn't do any detection. It's automatic. So this will get URL decoded to this. All right, and that's what's going to be checked by the server. So to get around that, we do it again. Convert selection again, and now this is going to get URL decoded, right? Which is now doesn't say local hosting. However, when you pass this into a, um, if you, you try and make a get request for this, sometimes if if the if it, if the programming is really helpful, it'll decode it. And, and just assume that you meant to type that, basically. So this this will just go to localhost. Um, it, it won't usually, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I think if I... I mean, maybe I haven't actually tested this, but if I just curl... If I curl this... Oh, it will. All right. So curl works. <laughs> uh, so I have... Um, if I do var www index... Oh.html. Right, that's my index. I wasn't honestly expecting that to work, but yeah, so curl will will uh, will decode anything like this if it detects it, I'm guessing. Uh, fun times. Alright, so uh, the other thing we did. So once we did get past this, found it slash admin is the admin panel, but we type admin in and it's blocked again but if you type if you do admin like that um it lets you in because case sensitivity is generally um it, it depends on the server like i'm pretty sure if i do localhost slash index.html and then Index.html? Yeah, that won't work. Uh, yeah, we could try encoding admin, but I doubt it. Because it said there were two that it did. So we we'll URL encode that and then URL encode it again. Yeah, so that didn't work. See, we're not actually on the admin panel. I should probably just click render. Uh, if I do it again. Invalid URL here. Yeah, we've, we've, we've done it too many times now. Um, and if I obviously if I only do it once, it's not going to work anyway. Well, admin does. Alright. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that would work. Um... 
Uh, probably it's probably just literally checking for the word admin. So, I mean, it might be checking for something like, yeah, like maybe if we do this. No. Yeah, literally, it's just checking for the the word admin in lowercase. All right. Um. So once I do that, we need to grab. Probably need to delete Carlos again. I don't even care if we we no, don't need to. We're gonna do it. No, we did. Yeah. All right. On the screen of my socials, follow me on Twitter while it still exists. Join the Discord server where people can ask me questions and also, you know, I'll tell everybody when I'm streaming. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously. Follow me on Twitch. 